In this unit, we will set up the simulation project for our Mie scattering example. First, we need to add the materials we need in our simulation. Let's open the optical material database. In this example, we need two materials, gold for the nanoparticle and vacuum for the background. We will select the Johnson and Christie model for gold. Clicking create will add this material to the materials group in the object tree. We now do the same for vacuum and close the material database. Now that we have defined the materials needed in the simulation, we can create the geometry. We add a sphere that will define the simulation volume. Then we edit its properties by naming it outer set its radius to be 250 nanometers and choose its material to be vacuum. From the graphical rendering tab we set the alpha property to be 0.5 so the sphere becomes semi-transparent in the layout editor. Next we will add another sphere that will define the surface where the light is injected. We name this sphere source and set the radius to 70 nanometers. The material assigned to this object is vacuum. As both outer and source objects are assigned the same material, which is vacuum, we need to check the preserved surfaces box in this object so the surface of the source sphere can be used to inject the light. Otherwise, the solver would merge both objects together since they are both made of the same material. Finally, we set the alpha to 0.5 for this sphere as well. Now we add another sphere that represents our nanoparticle. Let's name it particle. Set the radius to 50 nanometers and the material to gold. Finally, we add a 2D rectangle which will be used as a reference plane to define the monitor that will record the field profile inside and around the particle in the XY plane. The default settings of the rectangle object are sufficient for our simulation. The next step is to define the simulation region. Let's edit its properties. We will do a 3D simulation and set all the boundaries to open so the simulation region is defined by the outer limits of the geometry, in our case, the outer sphere. We can now add the DGTD solver to our simulation. In the solver properties window, we set the simulation time to 35 femtoseconds, the number of edges per wavelength to 5 and the polynomial order to 2. More details about the definition and application of these settings will be provided later in this course. At any time during the simulation setup, we can use the partition volume mode to visualize the simulation setup as can be seen by the solver and to make sure that the simulation is set up as intended. In our example, we can see that based on our simulation setup, the simulation region is divided into four domains of vacuum and two domains of gold. Upper and lower domains are formed because the 2D rectangle used as a reference plane for the monitor cuts the simulation volume in half. There are also two domains of gold which define the particle object. More details about the partition volume mode can be found in the simulation tips section of this course. Now let's define the boundary conditions for our simulation. We add an absorbing boundary condition and edit its properties. The surface type is set to solid. We select the outer sphere in solid and check the outer surface only option. This will assign the absorbing boundary condition to the outer surface of the sphere object 
which happens to be our simulation region boundary since we set the boundaries of the simulation region to open. It is important to understand that in this case, the simulation domain is not defined by the rectangular simulation region object, but by the largest geometrical object within the boundaries of the simulation region object. For more information about various types of boundary conditions and open simulation boundaries, please visit the simulation tips section of this course. Next, we add a plane wave as our light source and edit its properties. We will keep the default settings for the direction of propagation and polarization. In the geometry tab, we set the surface type to solid and select our source sphere. This will assign the light source to the sphere object that is surrounding our gold nanoparticle. Again, we check outer surface only so the light is injected from the sphere surface only. Finally, we set the wavelength range to be from 300 nanometers to 1100 nanometers. Now we will add the monitors that will record the desired data from the simulation. First we add a frequency monitor which will be used to calculate the amount of light scattered by the particle. We call this monitor SCAT, set the number of frequency points to 81 and check use linear wavelength spacing. In geometry we select the same settings as for the source. Surface type is solid and we select the source sphere. This will put the monitor at the same place as the light source which will allow the separation of scattered light from the light injected by the source. We check other surface only so the monitor will record the data at the surface of the sphere only. We now add a second frequency monitor to visualize the electric field distribution around the gold nanoparticle. We can call this monitor field XY and use the same frequency settings as the previous monitor. In geometry tab, we select solid and use the 2D rectangle as a reference plane to record the field distribution along the XY plane. The simulation setup is now complete. In the next unit, we will learn how to run the simulation we just set up and how to analyze the simulation results.